My name is Jehovah, and I know the end from the beginning. Therefore my hand shall be over thee, and I shall, will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee above measure, and make thy name great among all nations. Thou shalt be a blessing unto thy seed after thee, that in their hands they shall bear this ministry and priesthood unto all nations. And I will bless them through thy name. For as many as receive this gospel shall be called after thy name, and shall be accounted thy seed, and shall rise up and bless thee as their father. And I will bless them that curse thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee, that is in thy priesthood, and in thy seed, that is thy priesthood. For I give unto thee a promise, that this right shall continue in thee, and in thy seed after thee. That is to say, the literal seed, or the seed of the body, shall all the families of the earth be blessed, even with the blessings of the gospel, which are the blessings of salvation, even of life eternal. Yeah. Now, there's a lot going on here. But uh, if we don't catch more, uh, Abraham's getting a blessing uh, relative to his seed, down through the generations. Now, implicit in that is that at the side of Abraham is Sarah. Is Sarah. This is and, uh, and this is family. And this is a promise given to uh, uh, father and mother about uh, their children. And what they're getting uh, promised is that uh, it'll be their sons who uh, bear the priesthood in uh, all generations of time. They'll be the prophets. They'll be uh, the priesthood leaders. They'll be the missionaries. Uh, it will be their charge to take the blessings of salvation to the ends of the earth. What this means uh, in part is that uh, uh, if the Bible-believing world, both Jewish uh, and Christian, uh, really understood uh, the promises given to Abraham in the Old Testament the way they were given, uh, when uh, our missionaries uh, knock at their door, the first question they'd ask is, uh, well, who are you? And the missionaries would say, well, uh, we're Abraham's boys. All right? And then they'd say, well, then all right. Come in, I'll listen. So probably why our missionaries receive their patriarchal blessings before they go out. That's exactly right. A missionary, you don't send a missionary to a missionary training center unless he's had a patriarchal blessing. I don't think uh, they fully understand that. But that would put them in that position that they could say, yes, I'm a descendant of Abraham. How do you know? Well, I know in the most perfect way that you can know. Right. I have a personal revelation uh, that uh, verifies my kinship to Father Abraham, you see. You know, you can read you can read the Abrahamic covenant, as it were, in, in, in Genesis, in what, 13, 15, 17? Yeah. And, uh, and there are some beautiful things that come through there, but there's a great emphasis upon land and property and real estate. Yeah. Uh, here, notice how Christ-centered, how gospel-centered, how priesthood-centered this whole thing is. This is so much plainer. Family-centered. Family-centered. Family 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 isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, if you wanted to take uh, this text and and uh, now fit it in, uh, take uh, what we read in the first four verses and and the promise here, and, and fit it uh, in a, a, a broader perspective, come back with me to another 1835 revelation, and that would be section 107. This is a revelation uh, on priesthood, and uh, we won't uh, read all of the verses that are involved here, but uh, we can isolate a few of them, and, and we can get the, the feel, the flow. If you go down to verse 40, now, the order of this priesthood, and what we're talking about here is the very clearly the patriarchal priesthood was confirmed to be handed down from father to son. That was the system. It was what was supposed to happen. A great grandfather, a great great grandfather, the son, and to whatever. And rightly, again, we keep coming back to this uh, concept of uh, of the birthright belongs to the literal. We keep getting that word literal descendants of the chosen seed to whom the promises were made. This order, so now we're talking about an order of the priesthood, of the Melchizedek, of the Melchizedek priesthood, of the higher priesthood, which really in the beginning was the only priesthood that they had, wasn't it? it was instituted in the days of Adam and came down by lineage in the following manner. 
And so we're, then we trace it down. And what we're tracing is conferral of priesthood and then a special and particular blessing that followed, which would fit perfectly the pattern of Abraham. Abraham already had the priesthood, and then he sought for something that was greater. So you read from Adam to Seth, who was ordained by Adam at the age of 69 years and was blessed by him three years previous to his Adam's death. You see, you follow that same pattern all the way down until you get to this uh, great summary statement of the whole thing, verse 53. Three years previous to the death of Adam, he called Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalaleel, Jared, Enoch, and Methuselah, who were all high priests, I think that's saying to you that they had all sought after that same blessing that Abraham sought after, and they had received it, with the residue of his posterity who were righteous into the valley of Adam on Diamond, and there bestowed upon them his last blessing. And so they get this great blessing, and it's not insignificant that this blessing allows them to stand in the presence of the Lord, so immediately what do we read? And the Lord appeared unto them. And they rose up and blessed Adam and called him Michael the Prince, the Archangel. You see, you know people, people hear Abrahamic covenant, and we're prone because we hear it that way so much to suppose that that covenant began with Abraham. Mm -hmm. But like you said earlier, uh, we're talking about something that begins with Adam, yes. and that what God simply does is renews with Abraham the ancient covenant. I suppose it's much like, why call the priesthood the priesthood of Melchizedek? Well, it's actually the priesthood after the order of the Son of God, but because of the faithfulness of this man Melchizedek, much the same way with Abraham. Abraham sort of represents a, a classic example of one who received the covenant and kept the covenant. As, as Melchizedek is the classic yeah. example of the... Who received the priesthood, the priesthood. and magnified it. Yeah. And that same covenant is reconfirmed in the days of the Nephites, yep. yes. as well as in our days. So, I mean, we call it Abrahamic, but we could call it by any of these you names. You could call it the Gospel Covenant, mm -hmm. the New and Everlasting Covenant. Yeah. We could call it after uh, any of these men, if you That's want. That's right. Or you could call it the Patriarchal Order. Yeah. Uh, if you're just describing, in principle, you see what it is. Now, uh, at this point, then, you've laid a foundation so that uh, we can start to uh, see what all of this is going to mean uh, to Joseph Smith and to gather in Israel as Joseph Smith sends out the missionaries to uh, to gather them uh, and, and it's again really interesting to see how uh, the revelations unfold hey, uh, let me just, and this is, so you're talking all these positive examples I think we also get in the pearl of great price where it starts falling apart, but just because the promise is given does not guarantee that these that these blessings will unfold and that um, all the children will be blessed by that. We see Abraham that almost lost it just because of who his father was, but mm -hmm. at the end of Moses' account, we talked about these sons and daughters of God who uh, run into the sons well, and daughters the of God. The great issue was that they weren't married. That's right. Properly. They sold That's their right. birthright. They sold they sold their birthright. birthright. Right. That's one of the requirements when the, to, to be able to receive these blessings. Now, now we're still uh, in that context. Listen to this kind of language in section 121 where the Lord talks about those that uh, lift up their heel uh, against his anointed, if you will. Uh, oh, let's see. Pick the story up uh, in, uh, for our purpose. Um, pick it up in verse 20. We're talking about the curse that comes upon those that fight against the Lord, his people, his anointed.